Hey everybody, this is Frankie Day for Frankie Day Models. This boy is gorgeous Tuesday, halfway video four for my Hasegawa 172nd scale P5M Marlin flying boat. Alrighty, this thing's ready to be painted now, guys. It's all put together, all been primed, all scenes have been filled. This goes together pretty well. An old kit that still it still has its its value of admiration. And also for collectors of flying boats. Okay, this is going to be my uh, early summer build. Also part of my flying boat series that I have. I built the Mariner, Mariner. I built the Mars. I built the Albatross. A lot of flying boats. I got the Admiral Princess. I got the Sanders Row Princess up there. I got to get that down. And I'm going to paint that at the new house where I got room. And uh, so I'm going to start painting on this tonight. This thing has a, a length of over 100 feet, wingspan about 118 feet. Like I said, this thing is up with a PBM Mariner on, on steroids. This is the last of the United States Navy flying boats. Now, if you look at the Shinomiya PS-1 flying boat that the Japanese use for the anti-Soviet warfare, model, warfare models they use, if you look very closely, it, they, they actually they copied off this by looking at the fuselage. I was very honored, very, very, very lucky as a lad, a very small lad at that, during my years of puberty, when I got aboard one of these things, I was allowed to board one of them when I was a kid. A VP 48 at Sangley Point, Philippine Islands, right across the Manila Bay. Every day, every day, when I'd come home from school, I was go out there to the seaplane ramp and watch these things take off and, and disembark, embark. And I felt sorry for those poor guys out there, the, the, the swimmers out there, grabbing those. Those guys were constantly wet all the time, grabbing those beaching gear and stuff, and pulling them in and everything. These are a big airplane, very big airplane. I think they got uh, a real uh, example of it. I think, I don't know how many of these are available in the world today, but I know one such uh, aircraft does exist of this. I think it's a Pensacola, Florida. And pretty soon they're going to have the Martin Mars there pretty soon too. Because I, because I imagine they bought that from the forest industries out of Canada. You know, they're retiring their Mars flying boats. And they, they'll probably keep one for themselves. And the other one that I think they sold to uh, back to us. And they're going to put it in the museum. That would be a real treat to behold. That's a Philippine Mars I think it is. Okay, these uh, this is a very very old kit. I bought two of these back in 1971. They were uh, very very welcome because there was no P5Ms back in those days. Uh, the only flying boat that was available at the time, three only three flying boats I know that were available at the time in the Mali market was the PBY Catalina, uh, the Martin Mariner, which is by Gravel, the small box scale one. And they had the Seamaster too, which is by Ravel. And also, Monica made their uh, SA-16B Albatross, that too. That means four of them. The Mars never was on the uh, on a delicate or anything. They just more or less, during time and technology, it finally came out. Okay, right this video, I got the video number two. Uh, for the Avro York by Mach 72 Models. I've uploaded some slides already. And we're going to go ahead and take the camera and swing around to it. And take a look at the slides right after this video here. Before we close this video right here. i got a special tweet for you. I went ahead and started this B-25 I had. I had it since I was a child. Well, I'm actually a child, I was a 
actually got me. I'm a dog. Uh, 1957. Dad got this for my birthday. This is the Aurora B25 Mitchell bottle. Transparency and glued on. It was placed on there. I started this last night. And, um, It's not too, it's a little off a little bit, but it's pretty accurate. It's a lot more accurate compared to the old, the old Ravel one that they had uh, years ago, 1954. He brought, or Ravel brought out their box scale B25. Because I knew then there was something up that kept the wood right about it. It just didn't look right. Until this came out in 1957, my dad went to the hobby shop and bought this for me on my birthday. He came home from working and he goes, Hey, I got something for you for your birthday. You're going to like this. And uh, he bought this B25 for me. Oh, wow. And uh, my dad liked it so much, he bought himself one too. And uh, matter of fact, this one I've got right here is, one, is my dad's. The one I built. I didn't make sure it didn't stay in the box too long. I had to build it, which I did. My dad, being a military man and him being working all the time and stuff, he never had too much time building models. And even though he always bought models all the time, just put them away. I knew someday they'd be mine, which they were. So he gave me this. It was 1957, first release of the B25J Mitchell model. They did a pretty good job on this Aurora Day. Usually Aurora kits are, are pretty clunky. And uh, very heavy on the rhythms. Now, amazingly enough, just start building the same. These, these rivets are not, are not overdone. They're, they're, they stand out a lot, yes. Nothing compared to the B-26 Marauder by this company. I mean, I'm going to tell you, that whole plane was like one big hairy rasp. My God, you could... You, you could Sand down a goddamn jail cell with a goddamn with the wings that thing. Transparency not glued on. I just laid them on there just to give the scale, see how it looks like. It's pretty good. Now I built this kit. The first one I built was 1957. I compared it to my Monic to my uh, Ravel and says, man, this thing is a lot more accurate compared to this and it looked like a b25 the markings on the kit here is just box fictitious markings it says it's got united states air force on the wing you, you can see like i said they weren't glued on you can see the air force on here on the wing here you got raised decal that's where you place your decals at so you can't go wrong but anyway this thing here is probably a post. Uh, I'm gonna make this a, as a post World War II B-25. Uses a training this training squadron at their Boeing Field in Washington D.C. The only difference is what this initial is is that they give you uh, a yellow USAF on there. I'm gonna go ahead and use the decals on there. I'm gonna go ahead and use the kit. I'm pulling right out of the box. So this is more or less just a farm build, a memorandum build. Here's the decals to give you the kit. I took some decal on there. Took it outside and gave it a couple short blasts. Make sure these don't sit on you. A very old kit. This is going to be my summer fun build. I don't know when I get this done. It'll probably be done pretty soon. I don't know when, but I'll be working on it more. Don't take that much work on this thing, guys. I tell you, you can knock this thing out in about an hour. If you're an impatient kid with no patience at all, and you want to go out and have fun with this thing, build this thing, and play with it, back in my days, you can knock this thing out in about an hour. You're ready to go outside and play with the kids, and all the kids out there go, wow, where you get that B-25 at? That's what happened to me. I didn't play with it. I didn't play with it. I just more or less took them out, took it outside, and showed my friends it. And uh, the whole neighborhood had one of these. So this is pretty much pretty, very, very welcomed. 
When this airplane came out in 1957, as Mitchell did, they were still in service. They were actually still in service. Mitchell's were. I can remember that they're all aluminum. On top of the nacelles, they're all black across here. It had USAF on the United States Army, United States Air Force under the wings. It's supposed to be a traditional star and bar, too. So there's your B-25. That's a sneak peek back there. I started that last night. I said, you know, I'm getting old. I'm going to go ahead and build this thing get away with it. I don't really enjoy building this thing. There's about, I think it's about nine pieces. You get two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven pieces. Less uh, transparencies. Took about a couple hours to get that far. This thing fits together very well. No gaps. No gaps at all. I took a sand, a sanding uh, file board and sand across the same circle. It was really good. But it's, it goes, it's very level, even on there and it, uh, it fits very well. There's a little fit issue back here. You know, fit issue back here. It just it had needs to be filled in right there. Some filler. So I got to fill that in. Back here on the engine with a horizontal stabilizer set. That's pretty hideous right there. But some filler would take that out. And uh, yeah, this definitely looks like B25 to me. Nothing to write home about though. But since it's an old kid, it's worth it's worth a white right home about. Okay, I'm out of here. That's it for the B-25. That's it for the P-5N Marlin. I want to start painting this thing. I can get her clothes on. I should have this thing done probably by uh, by Friday. This Marlin will be finished by Friday. This Mitchell, I don't know. It'll be done soon. Okay. The video of the day is going to be the Avro York by Mark Models. This the Avro Chet, Roy Chadwick Special, the Avro 685 York Emergency Airliner Transport Plane. And uh, I got some good slides of that as the construction of the fuselage and I put it all button together. And I got filter on there, let it dry overnight and I'll sand it down. And go to something else too if you build it. That constitution over there is, is, is knocking at my door. So I'm probably starting on that. Okay, this is it for the P5M. This is it for the B25. This is it for me. And uh, make mama happy. Say your prayers. Take care of the little ones. Stay focused when you drive. Wear your surroundings. Be yourself a kid. Barbecue seasons hit the corner. It's just around the corner. It's here now. And outdoor activities are here now. And uh, we all got to get self kit filled. And... Uh, I'd like to thank all my new subscribers, old subscribers, all your candor, all your wonderful comments and views. I'm very deeply honored, and thank you very much. This is Frank Dave, Frank Dave Miles signing off. We'll catch you guys on the next video, which will be update ski number two on Mux Models 72 Avro York transport plane. Stay posted for that halfway in a second.